Hi, I'm Mike Ryan. In this video, we're going to get into a very controversial subject in the world of turquoise, and that is turquoise grading. Now, there are reasons why uh, there's controversy. Many of the miners and dealers in the trade, I believe, fear that having a grade assigned to their turquoise might reduce their revenues. But collectors, on the other hand, seem to welcome the idea of having a way to measure the different grades. We certainly see that in the other areas of the gem world. Unfortunately, the organizations involved in providing those measurements don't really consider turquoise a precious gem. So there is, there is no overriding regulatory body that could assign a grade and give it some form of measurement. So we're really kind of in a difficult position and that's why I took an older grading system from the Roberts Rules, which came out in the 1977 Turquoise Annual, and modified them, simplified them, to provide a framework for the measurement of turquoise. Now, any measurement system is always going to be vulnerable to subjective bias. And in our case, it's no different. So while we're going to grade some turquoise, applying the R2 grading system for Roberts Ryan rules, turquoise grading, we must realize that my opinion is going to affect that grade. So for that reason, I really encourage those of you watching this video, once you're familiar with how the grade is done, and it's pretty straightforward, to grade these same stones yourself. And let's see how the different grades come out. And when you do this, please enter your comments, your grading judgment into the comments section on the blog and uh, let's see what sort of consistency we get. It should be a fun exercise. So with that said, let's grade some turquoise. Before we begin the grading exercise, I'd like to take a look at the different grades of turquoise that we are going to include in this grading. We're gonna start and we're going to assign from the left to right, this will be stone number one, stone number two, stone number three, stone number four, number five, and number six. And we're going to be moving up in terms of grade as we move across the different stones. These are all from the Bisbee mine. So we've got different grades of turquoise coming from the same mine. So we take a look at these, and if you'd like, you can stop the video at any point. And, and once we look at the different grades, you can do your own grading on these and see how your grades compare to the grades that I've assigned. On our blog, you will also find a written article about turquoise grading that explains the grading system in more detail, so you'll have a better understanding of the criteria included and how the scoring is done. Okay. So now is where the fun begins. We're gonna grade these stones and we're gonna use the Roberts Ryan rules of turquoise grading. If you have read the article on the blog, you will know that we divide our grading system into three categories, color, hardness and density, and matrix. To those, we assign a weighting. 50% weighting for color, 25% for hardness and density, and 25% for matrix. We then assign to each stone a 
grade based on a 100 point system. So if we're starting with our first stone, number one, we've given it a color of 40 and it accounts for 50% of the grade. So we get a grade of 20. Hardness and density, we've graded that 50 out of 100 times 25% for a number, number grade of 12.5. Matrix of grade of 40 plus 25% equals 10, giving us a numeric grade that is below our 50 cutoff for grading. Uh, that's 42 and a half, and it's below our, our metric for providing a grade, so we get a non-grade. If we go on to the second stone, which is a solid stone, we don't have any matrix grade. So here we've given a color score, and we're just assigning, we're dividing the grade for matrix, 25%, 12.5 each to color and to hardness. Here we come up with a grade of 63.5, which is categorized as mid-grade. So now we go down the list. We find stone number three. We've given a grade for color of 85 out of 100, 82 of 100 for hardness and density, 80 for matrix. We've given them their assigned percentage, come up with the different scores. We get a score of 83, which falls into the high grade category. Here we have for stone number four. And as you can see, because of the very distinctive color here, we've increased the grade to a very high grade for color, less so falling down into a similar grade to what we saw for the number three stone for hardness matrix for a grade of 87.5 falling into the very high grade category. Next, we're going to look at this stone, which, of course, I hope you can see on there this very remarkable deep color of blue. Here we give it this exceptional grade of 98, simply because it is one of the most deepest in terms of hue and saturation of, of Bisbee blue that certainly I've ever seen. And I've had others make comment in agreement with that. So it's a very high score for color. Hardness and density less so because as you can see there, there's some pretty soft matrix there at the bottom of that cab. And the matrix really is kind of nondescript. It's really not divided in the, amongst the stone. It really don't, doesn't, in my opinion, add considerably to the overall effect of the cab. Yet, we see because of the very high grade for color, we're now at a point where it's at the very high range of very high grade, could very easily be boosted into the gem grade category. And that's almost entirely because of the effect of the color on the grade. Finally, we get down to stone number six, which I think most people looking at that, even without any grading system, would agree this is the highest grade stone among this group. Exceptionally beautiful example of Bisbee turquoise. So we're grading that at a color score of 94, a hardness density of 93, and a matrix of 93. So pretty much consistently among the three categories getting very high scores, resulting, as we would expect, into a score of 93.5, putting it well into the gym grade category. Now, I've had, when I first proposed this system, I had some people say, well, show us a perfect stone. Show us 100%. Why wouldn't you give 100%? And I think that has to do with part of the in inherent problems with any grading system is if you start grading up too high, you have nowhere to move. I could go in and, and, and give all these 100-point stones and then come back and see one better, and I would have no movement here. So I think once you get into gem grade, there's very little differentiation. You're in such a small, small percentage 
of total turquoise output that you just got to feel comfortable that you've gotten into that grade. So what I'd like to ask viewers to do is to go through a grading system yourself and compare that to what I did. I have found in the past that oftentimes the different graders were going to come within a fairly narrow range of differences, somewhere in the 5% range or less. And what we would, of course, do with different graders, we would then take an average of those grades. But in general, most graders are going to come out kind of in the same general area, although there's always going to be room for some subjective interpretation and bias. Also, we're not grading specifically to a particular mine. There are some mines where you would never get a gem grade stone by grade because the output of that turquoise would just never rise to that level. But for that mine, let's say a very high grade stone would be the best you could get for a particular mine. So these are again, other limitations with any grading system.